There is nothing worse than getting hot and sweaty at night when you sleep, but it won't happen again with the eight sleep pod cover. It goes over your existing mattress like a fitted sheet. You can choose a temperature for each side of the bed. It can even intelligently tweak the temperature automatically. I never knew I needed this until I tried it. It is an amazing thing. Now I don't sleep without it. Go to eight sleep dot com slash Pacman to save one hundred and fifty dollars on the pod cover. The link is down below. Welcome to the David Pakman show. I am Farron Cousins from Ring of Fire and Farron Balanced, and I am sitting in for David Pakman once again today. And we've got quite a show for you. We've got Donald Trump having multiple meltdowns about what they're talking about on Fox News. Marjorie Taylor Greene vowing to go after everyone if Donald Trump wins the 2024 election. Chris Christie for some reason actually surging in the polls. And of course, my pillow guy, Mike Lindell himself has a brand new symposium that he's putting on and boy, is it off to an awful start. We've got all that and more coming up. So let's go ahead and begin with Donald Trump's first meltdown from yesterday about what they're talking about on Fox news. Donald Trump on Thursday morning, I guess after watching Fox and friends got a little angry about what the folks on the curvy couch were talking about, but more importantly, he got angry about what they're showing on the screen when they talk about him because Donald Trump obviously is focused on the big issues of the day. Not, not as indictments, not, uh, not as presidential campaign. No, no, no. Donald Trump is more concerned with the photographs that Fox news is using of him on the air. Here is what the former president of the United States posted on truth social on Thursday morning. Why doesn't Fox and friends show all of the polls where I am beating Biden by a lot. They just won't do it. Also, they purposely show the absolutely worst pictures of me, especially the big orange one with my chin pulled way back. They think they are getting away with something. They're not just like 2016 all over again. And then they want me to debate (sighs) that obviously is, is definitely one of the biggest issues facing the nation right now. It's, it's, it's not Trump's 91 criminal charges that have been filed against him in the four indictments. It's, it's not the 2024 election. It's not climate change. It's not the Maui wildfires. No, the biggest issue facing the United States today is what photos the producer at Fox and friends decide to put up on the screen of Donald Trump. He doesn't like the big orange one. And I'm going to have to ask you to go ahead and narrow it down, Donald, because I'm pretty sure most photos of you could be categorized as the big orange one, right? I mean, listen, I get it. I don't like the way I look in photos, but that's because that's just how I look. And I think that's something that you're going to have to come to realize for yourself as well. They're not intentionally choosing unflattering photographs of you. You just look like that. So, you know, maybe lay off the, the bronzer, you know, the fake tanner. You're doing that to yourself. You don't want to look orange. Stop looking orange. Okay. You, you don't have a medical condition that's causing it. You're putting something on your skin that makes you look orange. And we know that by the way, because if you look at photographs of Donald Trump, when he's out on the golf course, what color is his skin? Normal. It's like a peach color. Then look at photographs of him doing a rally or doing an interview on TV. What color is he? He's orange. Like he is choosing to do that. That is a conscious decision the man is making. So you don't get to complain about it when you're doing it to yourself. That's like me sitting here being like, why are you showing videos of me in this blue shirt? I hate that. Okay. Well, I picked out the shirt. I'm wearing it. I don't get to complain, but let's get to the real heart of the issue, right? It's not just the photographs. As he said, why doesn't Fox and friends show all of the polls where I'm beating Biden by a lot? Uh, for the same reason, they're not interviewing Bigfoot because it doesn't exist. There are no polls showing you beating Biden by a lot. There's plenty of polls showing you beating the rest of the Republican field by a lot, but the polls of you beating Biden by a lot, 
they would have to go back, what, six months to find polls where you're even beating Biden by any. Because since March of this year, the aggregate polling data has showed that Biden has pulled ahead of you in every hypothetical matchup. So they're, they're not showing the polls because there's no polls to show just because you wish it to be so doesn't make it so. So if you want to complain about the photographs they're using, go to glamor shots, whatever it is. I don't even know if they still exist. Go, go get some professional headshots made where you're not wearing the orange makeup, email them to Fox news and say, please use these. But if you're not willing to do that, then I can't help you with either one of your make believe problems. But here is something that is a very real problem. And it's a very serious story. A Texas woman has been arrested for threatening to kill judge Tanya Chutkin, as well as democratic representative Sheila Jackson Lee, in addition to threatening to kill the LGBTQ community and also threatening to kill many others. Here is what happened. You have a woman from the uh, city of Alvin, Texas, by the name of Ab Abigail Joe Shry. According to the indictment against her, the arrest, Ms. Shry made a phone call, left a voicemail for Judge Chutkin, where she basically just laid out what will happen to her if she continues this process of presiding over the trial of Donald J. Trump. I'm going to read you this. This is from a, a local news station, WUSA nine. Here's what they wrote. <clears throat> According to the complaint, Shry admitted to department of Homeland security investigators. She left the voicemail, which began quote, Hey, you stupid slave followed by a racial epithet and then proceeded to threaten to kill anyone who went after Trump. That list included Chutkin Lee, all Democrats in Washington, DC, and all people in the LGBTQ community investigators wrote. She then said, quote, you are in our sights. We want to kill you. Shry allegedly said at one point later adding, if Trump doesn't get elected in 2024, we are coming to kill you. So tread lightly followed by an expletive. That's about as clear cut as you can get. This is what happens when Donald Trump's rhetoric, when his attacks against these individuals who absolutely have the right and the authority to muzzle him, this is what happens when that's not reined in. And I know obviously there's, there's freedom of speech issues. You know, don't get me wrong. I totally get that. But at the same time, we're dealing with deeply disturbed individuals out there. That is why Donald Trump does what he does. That's why he phrases things the way he phrases them. Cause if you look at the people specifically mentioned judge Chutkin, Sheila Jackson Lee, those are the two mentioned by name. And it's fairly obvious what these two women have in common. I mean, Sheila Jackson Lee, by the way, is, is not even necessarily going after Donald Trump. She's not a part of it. So why bring her into it? Why bring the LGBTQ community into it? That doesn't make any sense either. All Democrats in Washington, DC. I mean, this woman based on, on what she admitted to in this phone call sounded like she was just about to go on a massive killing spree. And it's because of Donald Trump's rhetoric. It is because of the things he says and he says them and he phrases them the way that he phrases them because he knows that there's people like this out there. He knows that his base is made up of people like this. And that's why this is so dangerous. I talked about it on this program yesterday about the threats coming in against judge Chutkin, against Fonnie Willis, against the, uh, the grand jurors, you know, they've been doxxed by these Trump supporters. And I had mentioned yesterday, obviously before this report had come out, hopefully it just stays rhetoric. Hopefully it does not escalate into action. This is a woman who was kind of caught between the rhetoric and the action telling these people explicitly, I am going to do this. If you continue with what you're doing now, of course, this, this individual is now in custody. Um, and, and she needs to stay there. She needs psychiatric help. 
Okay, this is not just a, ah, oh, it's just a criminal, lock him away and throw away the key. These people need help. So you cannot just lock them up and forget about them. You've got to deprogram, right? You've got to get in. You got to find out what's going on, what went wrong to make her do this. Because if you do not solve the root of the problem, then this kind of behavior with these individuals will not subside after some time in jail. They will emerge with the same types of thoughts, with the same kinds of problems. The problems are what have to be addressed. And our justice system, unfortunately, does not do a very good job of addressing those kinds of issues. Moving on, Donald Trump, as we all know, is supposed to be headed to Georgia on Monday, where at 11 a.m. Eastern time, he is going to be holding a press conference where he is supposed to reveal finally all of the evidence that he and his friends have gathered, allegedly showing that the Georgia election was in fact stolen from him. Now, why he couldn't have done this, you know, I mean, even a week ago before the indictments came down, I don't know. You know, sometimes you're putting reports together. You wait till the last minute, right? He's a bit of a procrastinator, I guess, but he told us earlier this week, by God, Monday come hell or high water, he is going to Georgia and he's presenting all that evidence that will totally exonerate him. His supporters are thrilled, right? They're super excited. Like, oh heck yeah, let's do this. Let's finally get this out in the open. But there's one group of people that's totally not happy about this at all. And that group of people, according to a report from ABC news are his lawyers. Donald Trump's lawyers are now begging him, please do not go to Georgia. Please do not have this press conference. Whatever it is you think you have, do not release it. In fact, the lawyers are starting to say what I've been saying about Donald Trump for the last year, say nothing. Try that for once. How about you just zip it? I mean, that's always an option. You don't have to say anything because here's the thing, anything, and this is what his lawyers know. And I think this is what they're trying to warn him. Anything you say, whether it's in a press conference, if it's in a rally, if it's in an interview, any and everything you say is going to be used against you at this trial. So if you go out there and present this so-called evidence, all you're doing is making our job tougher to defend you. All you're doing is kind of proving that, yeah, you deserve to be charged because you're still trying to overturn the election. Don't do it. As we know, Trump's not the kind of guy to actually listen to the lawyers. He doesn't think anybody is smarter than him. So he refuses to listen to people who are actually smarter than him. So he's stuck between a, a rock and a hard place at this point. He can either listen to his lawyers, not go to Georgia and then let down all of his fans who are then going to be left with no other alternative, but to think that, oh, I guess he doesn't have evidence. Some of them may start thinking that maybe, maybe he is lying about this. He doesn't want to let those people down, but he will, if he cancels the appearance or most likely option. He goes to Georgia, he holds his press conference and he makes things so much worse. There is no good outcome for him on this. Either he doesn't screw up his legal case, but screws things up with his base or vice versa. And he did this to himself. Like so many other things, Donald Trump does these things to himself because he doesn't think he just does what he feels like and then deals with the consequences. Typically never until now. Now he's having to deal with the consequences. And as we can tell, he doesn't like it very much at all, but that's what happens when you don't think before you act. I am Farron Cousins. If you want more from me, you can follow me on my two YouTube channels, youtube.com slash the ring of fire and youtube.com slash Farron balanced. I am on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, threads, and Twitter. So I still refuse to call it X. Across all of those, I'm at Fair and Balanced. I'm sitting in for David Pakman today. We've got a lot more coming up. We'll be right back. I do not like getting hot when I sleep, and scientific studies have shown us that when you lower your body temperature while sleeping, you can achieve better sleep and end up more refreshed the next day. 
which is why the pod cover by our sponsor eight sleep is one of the things in my house that I would not want to live without. This is super easy because the pod cover just goes on your mattress. You can set the entire thing to one temperature or you can set one side to a different temperature than the other side if you have different preferences potentially. And it can also automatically adjust the temperature for best sleep based on your sleep cycles and the temperature of the room. And it covers the entire bed. Unlike many of the competitors, you can go as low as 55 degrees, as high as 110. I just don't wake up hot and sweaty anymore. I wake up feeling rested. It's a great thing. You really don't fully appreciate it until you try it for yourself. I could not imagine sleeping without it. Go to eight sleep dot com slash Pacman to save one hundred and fifty dollars on the pod cover. The link is down below. Welcome back to the David Pakman show. I am Farron Cousins from Ring of Fire sitting in for David Pakman today. And if you happen to enjoy what I have to say, I do encourage you, please go follow me across social media, whether it's TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook. I'm at Farron Balanced, including on YouTube. Find me everywhere at Farron Balanced. Now let's switch gears a little bit because Marjorie Taylor Greene is out there saying some pretty revealing stuff right now. According to a post that Marjorie Taylor Greene made on the social media platform, formerly known as Twitter, Greene says that if Donald Trump wins in 2024, they are going after everybody. So here's what happened. Cause it's a bit of a bit of a long story more complicated story, I guess, to get to the Marjorie Taylor Greene comment this week, a group called Capital Research Center, which is a right-wing group funded by right-wing funders. And it actually was started by somebody from the Heritage Foundation a couple decades ago. But anyway, they put out a report saying that the voter registration project is the largest and most corrupt charitable voter registration effort in American history. And I'll tell you what their alleged crime was in just a moment. But they put out this report saying, Hey, this group that registers voters is somehow corrupt and horrible. And, uh, so former Trump advisor, Stephen Miller shared that on social media and simply asked Rico, you know, cause Trump was just hit with Rico charges. So now they want to hit somebody with Rico charges. And to that Marjorie Taylor Greene responded. She said, yes. When we take back the white house, we will go after all of them. Nothing will be forgiven this time. So she says, yes, the voter registration project, we will hit them with Rico charges. So you got to imagine at this point, like, oh, and she basically said all of them, right? Not just the voter registration project. She's saying we're going after everybody. And she's actually made that comment, uh, recently as well that the Trump administration is totally going to just launch a massive revenge tour. More on that in a second. But anyway, you got to be asking yourself, right? What did the voter registration project do? What did they get caught doing? Cause obviously if they're the most corrupt charitable organization, according to the campaign research center, it's got to be pretty massive, right? It is. I will read this. This is from the report from, uh, I'm sorry, capital research, capital research alleges that the voter registration project was used by democratic donors and consultants to quote, selectively register millions of non-white swing state voters in the hopes of getting out the democratic vote for a 2020 presidential win. So they registered voters. They, they registered non-white voters and that's that's what capital research has, has, has a pro like that's corrupt getting non-white people to vote. That's racketeering you using donor money that they give you to go register voters. And then they use it to register voters. That's in the minds of Marjorie Taylor green in the minds of Stephen Miller, that's racketeering. That's also what they would probably consider like that's stealing an election. You registered people that weren't already registered. Now more people voted. I, I don't, I, sometimes it's so difficult 
to even talk about these stories because they're so irrational. They, sometimes these people are just so nutty that it's almost hard to refute what they're saying because it doesn't even come close to making sense, right? This isn't a real debate. There's nothing to debunk here. Capital research is mad that democratic groups are going out there and registering voters deal with it. Like if you don't like it, why don't you go out and instead of making fake accusations against voter registration project, why don't you go out and register voters, get Republicans registered to vote, right? I mean, that seems like the solution, but then you got Stephen Miller Rico. And then Marjorie Taylor Greene says, yes, we will go after all of them. No one will be forgiven this time. But that's really the heart of what this is about, right? It's not just about capital research, making absurd claims about the voter registration project. It's not about Stephen Miller suggesting Rico. It's about Marjorie Taylor Greene admitting a very simple reality that we need to address. And that is the fact that if Donald Trump ever gets back into that white house, it is going to be a nonstop four year revenge administration. It will not be based in policy. It will not be based in helping average Americans or struggling people. It won't be about addressing conflicts and crises as they pop up. It will be Donald Trump drunk with power, angry about what's happened for, to him for the last eight years at that point. And every single person that is not a MAGA hat wearing cult member will have a giant target on their back. Me, probably you, everybody but they'll start with the big ones. They'll start with the organizations. They'll start with the democratic groups. They'll start with democratic politicians. And once they run out of them to go after, then they'll go down a tier. They'll go after the people that do this for a living. People like David, people like me, people like Jesse Dollimore, people like Sam Cedar. Those are the folks that they will come after next. I, we've already seen, by the way, just on that note, what's happening with Elon Musk's X. It is actively promoting right wing, you know, uh, people, uh, it's doing very little to combat the hate that is now rampant on that platform. And it is in effect helping to silence those of us on the left. So we all will have targets on us. Now we probably won't be investigated the way that the other Democrats will. Uh, you think what we've seen so far this year is bad from Republicans. I mean, what we would see under a Trump administration has nothing on what those house Republicans have done this year. It'll be Hunter Biden. It'll be Hillary Clinton. It'll be Barack Obama. It, it'll be uh, Adam Schiff. It'll be Jamie Raskin. It'll be Dan Goldman. It'll be every member of the squad, Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, Jeff Merkley, Ed Markey. My God, if you're a Democrat in Washington, DC, Donald Trump will make sure that your life becomes a living hell. And if you're not a Trump supporting Republican, if you happen to have made the mistake of endorsing any of the other Republicans running for office right now, you're also going to be a target. That is the threat. That is the danger of another Trump administration, but it goes beyond that too. Cause we've got checks and balances in place, right? You can't just have one president that goes out there, does all this crazy stuff and gets away with all of it. And nobody's there to stop him. Right? We have a department of justice, right? We have the FBI, we have other cabinet positions that typically rein it in, but this is the thing Trump learned from his first four years in office to make sure that he doesn't put anybody in a position of power. That's ever going to tell him no. So if he comes up to them and says, Hey, we need to steal this next election. He's not going to be met with people like Mike Pence or Bill Barr who say, Hey, that's a bridge too far for us. He'll be met with people who say, yes, sir. That is a great idea. What do you need me to do? That's the threat. It's not just that they're spelling it out for us, telling us we're going after everybody. They're not trying to hide it. The problem is they would be able to do it because Trump is going to make sure to pack that administration with yes, men and yes, women, and nobody will tell him. No, there will be no adults in the room. It'll be nonstop investigations of anyone that Trump thinks is his enemy. But before he gets there, 
he actually has to get into the White House. And of course, that's a long shot. And according to new reports this week, Chris Christie, of all people, might actually be surging in the polls. That's right, Chris Christie, who just a week or so ago in the nationwide polls of Republicans was, was polling at 2%, somehow, some way, is by definition surging in New Hampshire. Now, before I get to the actual poll numbers <laughs> and tell you what's really happening, it is important to realize that Chris Christie surging in the polls in New Hampshire is not surprising. Chris Christie has focused most of his campaign on New Hampshire. You know, he wants to knock out that early victory and then see if he can build momentum from there. Not that New Hampshire's a giant prize, but because it's early, if he can pull out a victory or even a second place finish, it may make people in other states down the road think, okay, maybe this guy can do it. Um, but the poll numbers are not exactly as <laughs> astounding as you would think, right? <laughs> I mean, here's the headline from the Hill. It says, Christie sees path in New Hampshire to beat Trump. Wow. So you would think from that, like, okay, well, obviously Chris Christie's like right on the cusp of overtaking him, right? Eh, not exactly. According to the numbers <laughs> in the Republican primary in New Hampshire, Donald Trump has 49%. And Chris Christie has now surged up to 9%. And Ron DeSantis is only at 8%. So you're, I mean, <laughs> the Hill makes it sound like there's a path to beat Trump. He's beating you by 40 points right now after being indicted four times. <laughs> so he's ahead of you by 10 points for every indictment he has got. Um, but Hey, I mean, you always got to look on the positive when you're running for office, right? Like, Hey, I was at 2% now over in this one state where I've spent millions of dollars. I'm up to nine, still second place, only one point ahead of Ron DeSantis, but Chris Christie will take it. Now, Chris Christie has made his entire presidential campaign about how bad Trump is. And with the more moderate members of the Republican party, I'm sure that plays well, but so far, even though you hate Donald Trump, we get it. We've heard it. We feel the same way. You're not talking policy. And eventually that will come back to bite you. You will have to lay out a strategy. That's not just, Hey, I'm not Trump. Okay. That'll get you to, to a point, but it won't get you past that point. And so far, Chris Christie has not gotten past that talking point. So surging to 9% which for the record is technically still in the margin of error, which puts him in a statistical tie with, I think three other people, including Ron DeSantis. Um, not exactly strong. It's especially not strong when you look at the polls margin of error, which is, what was it? 4.9%. So basically a 5% margin of error, which for the record is terrible. When I was in school, in college, and I have a degree in political science, one of the classes we take is about polling, or at least one of the classes I took was about polling. And the first thing we learned on day one, and I still have the notebook sitting in my bedroom right now. First thing we learned, if a political poll has a margin of error greater than 3%, disregard it. That is what we were taught. A margin of error of greater than 3% indicates far too many external factors, things not taken into consideration and an overcorrection by the pollsters that basically means it should not be considered accurate. So even though the poll shows that Chris Christie is now beating DeSantis by one point, losing to Trump by 40 because of that high margin of error. And I'm sure maybe the equation has changed by now. Maybe it's greater than three you know, maybe 4% you should disregard, but I'm going to live by that 4% or 3% because that's what I was taught. Listen, we got to take another quick break, but once again, uh, you can follow me, Farron Cousins on YouTube, youtube.com slash the ring of fire, youtube.com slash Farron balanced. I am Farron Cousins sitting in for David Pakman today. We've got a lot more show on the way, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. 
Don't forget that the best way to support the David Pakman show is by becoming a member, which gives you access to the daily bonus show, the regular show with no commercials. You also get access to our entire archive of every episode dating back a really long time and plenty of other awesome membership perks. Go to joinpacman.com. Joinpacman.com. Welcome back to the David Pakman Show. I am Farron Cousins, host of Ring of Fire and Fair and Balanced. I'm sitting in for David Pakman today. And in the previous segment, I had talked about Chris Christie allegedly surging in the polls in New Hampshire. And let's switch gears a little bit and talk about my favorite Republican candidate, favorite only because he's such a horrible human being and I'm enjoying seeing him go down in flames, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Thanks to leaked documents, we now have Ron DeSantis's debate strategy, which of course was posted online by a group associated with Ron DeSantis. So this wasn't necessarily a leak. It was actually them saying, here you go. Here's what the governor is going to do next Wednesday. And it might be one of the dumbest debate strategies I've ever seen. To sum it up, there are four points in this memo. Number one, number one strategy, attack Joe Biden and the might in the media three to five times. <laughs> I like how they're like, just do that like three to five times. Point number two, state governor Ron DeSantis's positive vision two to three times. Number three, hammer Vivek Ramaswamy in a response. <laughs> like just find a response, work it in, go after Vivek. Uh, number four, defend Donald Trump in absentia in response to a Chris Christie attack. Um, that all seems pretty dumb, but all right. All right, listen, let's break this down point by point. Attack Joe Biden and the media three to five times. Okay. Makes sense, right? You're vying for the spot at the top of the Republican ticket. Joe Biden will be your democratic opponent. You want to go after him and hit him on what? See, cause that's the problem. You don't have a plan. You know, you want to attack him. You're going to say open borders. You're going to say, uh, he's old and can't figure things out. You're going to say, Oh, his son, Hunter Biden. Let's mention that again. There's that's, that's the three times I got to do like, that's what you're going to hit him on. So not exactly a stellar thing. I mean, there's obviously things you could go after him for. I'm not going to give you that ammunition here, but not exactly, you know, a home run strategy there, right? Like attack Biden. Yeah. Everybody on the stage is going to attack Biden. So that that's not really original attack the media. Oh, okay. You're, you're on the most watched cable news network in the country while doing the debate. So it's kind of ironic, of course, that you would attack the media for that when you're on the biggest one there is. So sure, go for it. The Republican base loves it. It's not going to win over anybody in a general election. Neither really are your attacks on Biden because you're not going to attack him on substance. You're going to attack him on the things that are basically make-believe fantasies in Republican world. Second one, state your positive vision. Do, do you have a positive vision? By the way, that's not policy either. It's just positive vision. I envision an America where we don't have open borders, where we don't have Hunter Biden, where, uh, uh, the government's not weaponized to take on Donald Trump. That's going to be his vision. Trust me as somebody that has lived in Florida for DeSantis's entire reign of terror, there is nothing positive about anything this guy has done. So he's probably going to talk about, I kept my state open during COVID. And then he's going to admit, omit the fact that Florida had the highest per capita death rate of COVID. So there's going to be that he's going to talk about his banning of critical race theory, even though it wasn't being taught in grade schools here in the state of Florida. And he's going to go into some, you know, attacks on Disney, which have all backfired on him <laughs> spectacularly. And he's going to have nothing else to talk about because the man doesn't have a positive vision. And then of course, hammer Vivek Ramaswamy. And the reason that's even in there, by the way, is because in the most recent, uh, nationwide poll, Ramaswamy has now bumped up to second place. And in New Hampshire alone, he's gone from 1% to 11% 
in, uh, I believe it was an Emerson College poll. So Ramaswamy is actually technically, I guess, the, the runner up at this point, And Ron DeSantis has been bumped down to three. But their plan is not just attack him. They have actually, in these memos, his leaked strategy, the plan is to have a nickname that they're going to launch at the debate, and it's going to either be Fake Vivek or Vivek the Fake, right? We're not exactly sure. Like, one of those, like, fake, fake how? What, what does that even mean? Like, he's fake. Are you saying he's not a real person? Kind of like the airplane freakout lady, like that? guy's not real. I mean, what do you mean fake? Fake how? (laughs) Come on. Like that's not even a good nickname. Meatball Ron, on the other hand, I wholeheartedly endorse that one. And then of course, defend Donald Trump in absentia. Yes. Defend the man that has spent literally this entire year attacking you and dragging you down. Do I need to remind you, Ron, about the fact that a political action committee aligned with Donald Trump put out that uber disgusting video of the guy eating pudding with his fingers while attacking you the whole time with the voiceover. those, Those are Trump's friends. They hate you. They have spent the whole year hating you, making you look like an idiot. They're the reason you dropped from basically being tied with Trump to now struggling to maintain third place. And your goal is to defend him. I get why you're doing it. I 100% get why you're doing it because you think eventually Trump won't be the nominee and you want to get his base. Well, guess what? Ramaswamy has already done a much, much better job of you of defending Trump in the media. He has been cozying up to the MAGA crowd for quite some time. You're playing catch up with a group that already hates you. So defending Trump is not going to win over those people because he's already convinced them as his cult followers that they have to hate you. So that, that plan is going to go nowhere. And if you don't believe me, why don't you give Ted Cruz a call and talk it over with him and see how well that worked out for him? Cause the answer is it didn't, he got his butt kicked. I mean, Ted Cruz, by the way, there was a point in time, Ted Cruz was the guy to beat in 2016 for a long time, it was pretty much assumed, you know, basically before the voting started, like Ted Cruz is going to be the one ended up getting the nomination. And then Trump took him down and then Ted Cruz occasionally fought back, occasionally didn't. Then, you know, we got the humiliating picture of him on the phone, phone banking for Donald Trump. And it didn't work out well for him defending the man that attacked his basically his entire family tree. But if you want to go that route, you go that route, Ronnie. I'm not going to stop you. Okay. Your plan will not work for one simple reason. And it's not because the MAGA base has been trained to hate you. It's not because there's not things to attack Biden on. The problem is you're not going to hit any of the points that the actual voters out there want to hear. Voters want to hear about policy. Voters want to hear not visions, but plans. And there is a world of difference between those two things. My prediction for this debate, which again is coming up this coming Wednesday, um, we're not going to hear policy. We're going to hear fantasy statements about open borders and Hunter Biden and oh, $20 million to the Biden family, but we can't quite prove it, but we know it's kind of there maybe. And we're going to hear, we need to do this. We need to make the border not open. That's not, not exactly a policy because you're addressing something that doesn't exist. We need to put America first. We need to show China who's boss. We need to be tough with Putin. That is the extent of the so-called policy talk. You are going to hear from these Republicans, any and all of them at this debate next week, no real ideas no real progress for the United States, just a bunch of weirdos who think that they're qualified to be president with no actual clue of what they would do if they were to have that power for themselves. But maybe we don't have to worry about these Republicans. Maybe they don't need to have plans because do you know who has a plan folks? My pillow CEO, Mike Lindell. 
This week, Wednesday and Thursday, Mike Lindell hosted yet another, uh, I don't know if you call it a summit or a symposium, but either way, the pillow magnate went out there and finally fulfilled his destiny after teasing us for a month and a half saying that God had given him this plan to restore the United States, to, to bring us back to glory. So I, I don't know about you, but I've been waiting with bated breath, right? Super excited to hear God's plan to, to restore the United States to, to glory. And it, it never came. I, I know it's a shocking thing to hear me say, but Mike Lindell made a bunch of promises leading into the symposium that he did not deliver on. And I know there's like, oh my God, I can't believe he would do that, right? Um, no, but for real, as per usual, Mike Lindell makes a bunch of big, bold statements that mean absolutely nothing. And then when it comes time to show his actual plan from God, there's nothing. But what's even funnier is that from the start of this conference, which began on Wednesday, things didn't go right. So I'm going to show you this clip. Okay. This is Mike Lindell kicking off this symposium summit, whatever you want to call it, where things within a matter of seconds went completely off the rails. Take a look. This historical election summit is so important that it's being broadcast around the world in 85 languages on frankspeech.com. This election summit is not going to be about more evidence. We have enough evidence. Evidence has been the easy part. This summit is all about hope and the plan to secure our elections immediately. I want you I want you to watch this video and see if you all remember this. They're attacking his power grid. No, no, Please no, this is the wrong Mike one. Lindell. This is the wrong one. <laughs> Hold on. Well, that's coming. Wow. So I, I'm glad he said that he wasn't going to talk about, oh, voter fraud. I've proven that. I've proven that enough. I don't have to prove it anymore. Um, tell it to the judge. I mean, literally, because all of the judges have thrown out your lawsuits and you're actually being sued for defamation from the voting machines company, uh, companies based on the statements you've made. So if you say you've presented the evidence, literally tell it to the judge because you're facing hundreds of millions of dollars for what you've allegedly proven. And then the Kimmel clip, right? <laughs> Absolutely hilarious. So here's the other thing about this, right? Obviously Mike Lindell's not running the computer playing the clips, but his, his guys in the back are his tech team. And Mike Lindell has told us for the last two years that he's got the best tech. I got the best cyber guys, the tech guys, they know all of this. They can't even figure out which fricking clip to play. Okay. Are those the guys we're supposed to trust that went through that voter data and the, the ghost drives and all that? Like, really? They can't differentiate between clip of opening statement and funny thing Jimmy Kimmel said. I mean, I don't know what you name the files, you know, maybe that confused them, but you would think you who's boasted about the superiority of your cyber guys, as you call them, your tech guys. They, they, they can't even, they can't even figure out which clip to play. So you know what? I know it was a long shot here, but I'm willing to bet maybe Mike Lindell's people aren't as good as he likes to think they are. Cause if you can't even get it right with a clip, then I just don't even know what the heck you're doing. And on top of that, of course, we had photographs emerge of this event that showed a bunch of empty seats. According to folks on Twitter, it looks like there was maybe 200 people there. And Lindell says this thing's being broadcast in 85 languages. I mean, you saw that in the clip, 85 languages. I, I mean, really, is that really the best use of your money right now, Mike, to put on these idiotic events, to go out there and show people clips from Jimmy Kimmel? I mean, I like Jimmy Kimmel but I'm not going to travel across the country to hear you introduce clips of Jimmy Kimmel. But <laughs> this whole thing was a disaster from the start.
But as I always say, the real terrifying thing here is that there are actually people who believe what Mike Lindell is selling. And that, of course, is the real danger. Because even if there were 200 people in that audience, that was still likely 200 people who genuinely believe what this man has to say. And that's terrifying. I am Farron Cousins. You can find me across social media at Farron Balanced. Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, Threads, uh, Twitter, X, and on YouTube, youtube.com slash fair and balanced and youtube.com slash the ring of fire. We'll be right back with more on the David Pakman show. If you value what we do at the David Pakman show, remember to support us on Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash David Pakman show, where you can get access to behind the scenes videos, the daily bonus show, the commercial free daily show, as well as special discounts on merch, including hats, hoodies, mugs and t-shirts. You can support the show for as little as $2 a month. Check it out at patreon.com slash David Pakman show. Welcome back to the David Pakman show. I am Farron cousins from ring of fire sitting in for David Pakman today. Well, folks, we've only got a few more stories left to cover and I want to make sure to get them all in. So I'm not going to waste any time. Here we go. Joe Rogan host of the Joe Rogan experience. This week suggested in a talk with a former CIA covert officer, he actually suggested that it's the Democrats that are slow rolling the release of all of this horrible information about the alleged crimes of president Biden. During his conversation with Mike Baker, again, a former CIA covert operations officer, Joe Rogan said this. I'm an armchair conspiracy theorist. Oh, that's a no brainer. But if I had to guess, I would say that all this stuff that's coming out slowly, but surely, surely about Biden is on purpose. They want to get rid of him. I think he wants to run again. I and I don't think the Democrats think that he can win. I think they're right. And I think they're going to slowly, but surely expose more of these like very clear pieces of evidence of corruption. The 20 million is bananas. The fact that this isn't all over the New York times and the Washington post and mainstream news that they're not blaring it from the rooftops because you know, they would be if it was Trump to which Mike Baker responded. Oh, absolutely. Or really any, it wouldn't matter. Trump or whomever would be on the GOP side. Rogan continued. I think they're slowly releasing this stuff because they plan on getting rid of him. They have enough trust in the democratic establishment that they think that Democrats would figure out a way to run the country better, even with a puppet than they would with Donald Trump in office. So it's, it's the Democrats releasing all of this information that has in fact been released by Republicans. Um, you can call yourself an armchair conspiracy theorist all you want but, but it, it's, it's literally being released by Republicans in the house oversight committee, the house judiciary committee. They're, they're the ones that come out with all of these claims that are then later not substantiated. I mean, honestly, when he says the 20 million, it's bananas. I had to research and find out what the hell he's even talking about with the 20 million. And that is apparently allegedly, according to bank records that have been obtained by Republicans that they've actually had their hands on for months where they say that Hunter Biden, the Biden family is actually the way they phrased it. The Biden family has received $20 million from all of these different foreign entities. But it turns out as usual, that's, that's not the real story. The story is that Hunter Biden's business got the 20 million and it was actually split between him and his business associates. There, there is still no paper trail, no banking trail leading it back to president Biden. And there is no indication at all that this money was somehow illegally obtained. You may not be happy about the business deals, but that doesn't mean that it was illegal. You know, and Joe Rogan, like, Oh, I think the Democrats are doing it. If the Democrats were in charge of releasing any information about a president's child or child in law, receiving money from foreign governments, then why aren't they hyping the 2 billion that Jared Kushner got? You want to talk about buried stories? I know 20 million is a lot. 2 billion is a lot more. 
And even that one is still like not even a story because it may be unethical, but there's nothing illegal about it. Like we have not been able to trace that to any kind of, you know, nefarious plot. So it's, it's gone nowhere, but this is, this is ridiculous. Listen, if there was real information out there that president Biden committed a crime, I'd be one of the first people to talk about it. Okay. But it's not, this whole thing is stupid. And that's why you have to resort to being a conspiracy theorist to buy into any of it. But here's something you don't have to be a conspiracy theorist to buy into the fact that now Joe Manchin, who famously received the, the pin, excuse me, that president Biden used to sign the inflation reduction act a year ago this week, Joe Manchin has now come out firmly against the climate provisions of the inflation reduction act that just a year ago he actually voted for. And Biden foolishly, I might add, gave him the pen. Here's what Joe Manchin said this week. If implemented as designed, the IRA inflation reduction act will ensure that all Americans have more reliable, more affordable power for years to come. Going forward, I will push back on those who seek to undermine this significant legislation for their respective political agenda. And that begins with my unrelenting fight against the Biden administration's efforts to implement the IRA as a radical climate agenda instead of implementing the IRA that was passed into law. He's pissed that his pipeline is not being constructed right now. That's what Joe Manchin is mad about. He's mad that at a time where climate change is smacking us in the face every single day, he's mad that his precious fossil fuel pipelines not being built. Oh, how, how sad and sorry for you. He's also mad about the fact that the latest polls have shown him getting his butt kicked by his Republican uh, opponent in the upcoming Senate race next year, Jim justice. Jim justice, according to the latest polls is beating Manchin by 22 percentage points. So Manchin is likely going to lose his job. So he has to do what he has to do to convince the people of West Virginia that don't worry, I'm out there fighting for dirty energy. I know our state is ranked among the highest in the country in terms of cancer and, you know, pollution related illnesses, but I'm fighting to get you more. That's what he's fighting for. If you've never looked up the health statistics of the states of both West Virginia and Kentucky, they're two of the worst states in the country. Combined, they are the worst. Kentucky technically is the worst. West Virginia is right behind them. So they are the bottom two, but it is all deaths and all illnesses that you can trace back to corporate pollution. That's causing these states to have the worst statistics and mansions actually out there campaigning saying, I'm going to make it worse for you. You know, all your loved ones who died of cancer, I'm going to make sure that you can have the same fate as them. That's what Manchin is promising by saying he's going to be fighting against the climate part of the inflation reduction act. And for the record, the inflation reduction act is not some kind of radical left Bernie Sanders inspired agenda. We're not out there building windmills and, and, and solar farms and tearing down the coal burning power plants. We should be, I 100% think we should be, but we're not. We're just investing a little bit more in renewable energy, which again is always a good start, but it's not the end of the line. But to hear Joe Manchin tell it, apparently the hippies have taken over and there's no more fossil fuels to go around for the health of this planet. I wish that were true, but it's not. I know you need it to win your election, Joe. And I know you're toying around with the idea of running as an independent for president, but let me tell you something. You are no better than any of these other corporatist politicians out there pushing a anti-consumer agenda. That is what you are. And your policies have made your state health wise, one of the worst in this country. And to wrap things up today, folks, let's go back to Lindsey Graham. I know earlier this week, it was discussed on this program. The fact that Lindsey Graham, um, you know, didn't take too kindly to the indictments against Donald Trump. And he immediately went on Fox news and whined about it and made a fool of himself, but that was not the end of it. 
Lindsey Graham has continued throughout this week to go on Fox News and make a fool of himself. On Wednesday evening, he actually went on Sean Hannity's program and said that Donald Trump has, quote, he's been prosecuted in a way to make challenging an election a crime just for him. Because by golly, he's the only one that's been charged with it. Now, voter, uh, voters, <laughs> well, they are voters, but the, the users on, on social media, the site formerly known as Twitter, they were very quick to point out the fact that Lindsey Graham, he wasn't, he wasn't arrested for challenging the election. He was arrested for having a plot to try to steal it. You know, that, that's the distinction that Lindsey Graham fails to make, but I'm going to take it a step further. And I'm going to ask this question right here, right now. Why is Lindsey Graham's name not in the indictments from Georgia? Has anybody stopped to actually think about that yet? See, I think what's happening here is that Lindsey Graham is doing this little media tour on Fox news, trying to defend Donald Trump. I think he's doing it because he's got a guilty conscience. We know for a fact that Lindsey Graham was forced by a court to go talk to that Georgia grand jury. Oh, he fought it tooth and nail. He used the speech or debate defense. The judge was like, nope, not happening. You're testifying. So what did Lindsey Graham say? Why is he out there with his guilty conscience right now? Yes, he has defended Trump after his past indictments, but this one feels fake because after the previous indictments, Lindsey Graham went on Fox news and was basically in tears. I mean, he was choking back tears. You could see it in the video clips, but he has no tears this time. All he has are his words. Like, why are you not emotional about this one? It's almost if I were a conspiracy theorist, it's almost like you knew this was coming. Like maybe you told that grand jury some things that you don't want Donald Trump to know you said. Now, I don't like being a conspiracy theorist. Obviously I'm not the Joe Rogan type to do that, but isn't it odd that Lindsey Graham did talk to them yet? He's not mentioned in that indictment. Just a little food for thought to end your week. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am Farron Cousins. Find me on Ring of Fire. Find me at Fair and Balanced. Thank you for giving me the time. And thank you to David and his team for making this so fun for me. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot for watching today's show. I just want to take a second to tell you about today's sponsors. There is nothing worse than getting hot and sweaty at night when you sleep, but it won't happen again with the eight sleep pod cover. It goes over your existing mattress like a fitted sheet. You can choose a temperature for each side of the bed. It can even intelligently tweak the temperature automatically. I never knew I needed this until I tried it. It is an amazing thing. Now I don't sleep without it. Go to eight sleep dot com slash Pacman to save one hundred and fifty dollars on the pod cover. The link is down below.